We'll see what it comes up to. How much is it showing? Uh, 18.6. Climbing, 19. Okay. I guess that's the cool thing about the HHR <laughs> is that it tells you how far you can go and the amount of gas that you have at oh, yeah. the speed that you're going. Yeah, it's um, just options on the computer. It's nice to have. I will, uh, I think at best, I've been able to do with gas is about 500 miles on a tank. And that is under ideal conditions, freeway speeds, no stopping. Um, and uh, what about during the city? At the city, um, our best average was about 24, 25 miles per gallon. Miles per gallon. And that's about how many miles uh, from a full tank? Oh. I really don't know. <laughs> About 360, something like that. Okay, so 360 to 500 miles per gallon. No, my miles on a full tank of gas. Right. And that was when it was new. Now the car has run and it's... It had gotten uh, down to about... 24 in the city and about 20 about 26 on the on the freeway okay only because it's it's gotten worn it's not brand new anymore mm -hmm. so we're going to get some documentation and we'll see what it is right now um, before we've put the HHO kit on What's the HHO kit? <laughs> I'm sure you would know to be on here, but what the <laughs> HHO kit is, is um, using electrolysis to split the water atom into the hydrogen and oxygen gas, creating a perfect mixture that will displace gas air mixture requirement to keep the engine running. It'll um, increase efficiency because it's a hotter flame and I believe you don't have to worry about it overheating the engine because you're not running on pure HHO, you're running on a mixture of HHO and fuel air mixture. So it's just going to make the fuel air mixture more efficiently burned because the flash speed of the HHO mixture is much faster and hotter so it'll burn more completely your gasoline fuel air mixture okay the hhr does this have a turbo this one does have a turbo so we're going to um, have to inject our hho mixture um, at the intake of the turbo so that it compresses it with the rest of it because it, it won't pull it after the turbo it'll just not work that way because the pressure after the turbo is greater than the pressure outside so it wouldn't be able to get anything in there it just won't work that way so it's going to be on the intake side of the turbo and it'll be after the air monitoring, GM monitors, I believe it's GM, monitors how much air is coming through the intake um, to help the computer decide how much mixture needs to be injected into it. So it has to be between those two. Okay. <clears throat> what about a regular car? Do you have to worry about that? No, just put it in the intake and you're good. Okay. Uh, it would be best if you put it after the carburetor. Sometimes uh, you can put a high-rise manifold. Um, uh, not the manifold. A high-rise um, 
interplate, I guess you'd call it. It'd be a, a plate between the carburetor and the intake manifold. You can put an injection hole there and it'll pull it in that way and that way it won't be offsetting and being um, a variable on your carburetor setting. Your carburetor setting will still remain the same. Awesome.